Good evening and welcome to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight, where we talk to inspirational Fijians wherever they may be. She is as much a household name as her product is an essential part of every household in Fiji. Mary Tuisalalo Samasoni of Vanuambalavu in Lao, but raised in Levuka, revolutionized the way business is done in Fiji when she set up Hot Bread Kitchen. She's also won every Woman in Business Award, and today we will find out why. Mrs. Samasoni, it is such an honor to have you sitting here in the studio with me. You don't know how much I feel proud to be sitting with you. Thank you, Ellen. Ellen, please call me Mary. <laughs> oh, okay. I will do yes, that. Thank please, you. Yes, yes. I, I will definitely call you Mary. You're, you're somebody who should be respected for all the achievements yeah. that you have uh, Thank you. created and, Thank you. and made in Fiji. Thank you. I felt it was only right to call you Mrs. Samasoni, but I shall address you as yeah. Mary. Thank you very mm. much for giving me that opportunity. Mm. I just have to say, look at you. I, mm. I'm, every time I see you, you're just so well-dressed. Mm. You're, you're the epitome of fashion, mm. and age never seems to catch <laughs> up with you. Uh -huh. What is your secret? Ellen, you know, um, my secret is really respecting who I am. Yes. And that 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 value came from my mom and parents and grandmother and aunt and you know our, our, our family networks from the village yes you find yourself your identity you know early on in your life and if you can do that and find out who you are you you know you can't go wrong in, in, in your in your growth in your development in your education in whatever um, field you want to mm. move into because that basis, that foundation, will always come about. Now, finding that foundation, you know, to me, I was brought up, uh, I was educated and, and orientated as a nursing administrator. So health yes, was yes. very, very much part of my, my, my culture, my traditions, my knowledge, and e eating the right foods, nutritional. Mm. And today, you know, um, I, I concentrate on nutrition. But you have to also be careful today because there's so much, so much uh, pollution in mm -hmm. the air, in the ground, and in, in the food that you have to be very selective in what you eat. But you know, with bio, uh, um, bio organic uh, foods now becoming more popular and more um, uh, you know uh, marketable, uh, uh, you know, more people are moving away from the the big drugs and the big 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 uh, fertilizers and the big pesticides. Maybe a much more organic. Yes, yes. And and I I moved into organic food right. eating you know, a long time ago, and I'm I'm very interested in promoting that right. not only for families, not only as a nurse, but today as as a someone who's moved into the food business, yes. I try to bring that into yes. the our recipe. Well, it certainly has paid off because yes. you look the picture of health, mm, thank you. and I believe you are very well. Mm. And and just the fact, how, how do you choose your clothes? I mean, <laughs> that is just beautiful. Yes, uh, I knew you would ask here a bit, but you know, I've just got to ask. <laughs> That. Ellen, I knew you'd ask that. How do I choose my clothes? I think, you know, when you're growing up, and again, you learn this, this, this art of seeing things, liking it, you know. Uh, you develop an eye for color, develop an eye for style, yes. develop an eye for movement. I, I, I learned that way. I'm not a, 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 um, a scientific, um, um, you know, mathematical person. Right. I look at things in terms of color, movement, and, yes. and that's why I found out who I really was a long time ago. Right. So, so with that, the, the, you know, being able to, to see color. Right. And, and I grew up, and you, you, you learn that from, from when you're this high. Right. And um, color, style, um, all the way from village. And right. you know, I must say that. And there's so much, we need to tell our stories. 
Absolutely, alone. absolutely. And, and where we get our strengths from, right. and who we are, yes. and what we like, and what our talents mm. are, so that we can tell you know, others about it, oh, so that they can also, it. yes. Share it, and it's so that it doesn't get yes. lost. Yeah. So, you know, many stories have been told about you, mm. in terms of, you know, you've had a lot of media coverage, mm. people are very interested mm. in you, you're a very outspoken person, <laughs> and you're not afraid to tell it how it is, and I totally admire mm. you for that. When you came from Vanil level, I'm sorry, Vanil Mbalavu, mm. what did you want to be? Okay, I was born in Levuka. My parents, my father at that time, he was the postmaster of Levuka. Right. And he brought, I mean, he brought us over to Levuka. Um, and, um, sorry, what was your question again? What did you want to be? Okay, okay, I didn't know what I wanted to be. All I knew that was very, very... Because um, you went into nursing. Yeah. All I knew was that I wanted to, to, to take, I love beautiful things. I like to take care of things. I saw my mother doing that. My mother was, um, my parents, or my mother, she had, she came from a spiritual family. You know, right. So um, they looked after the, the village church and they came over. Actually, they came over from London, the Millers and the Blakes came over from London to Tonga, to Fiji, bringing education and, and the church. So. Mum, mum used to always talk about their days that um, when Papa used to preach at the church, he was, he, and um, he would co collect everyone from the village, all the sick people and the, all those who needed um, uh, their wounds cared for. Sunday was a, a day for him not only to preach to the people on what to do and how to do and the right thing to do, but he made his children <laughs> look after the, them. So mum's story, you know, really ignited something in me that, you know, they took care of people. Right. And mum used to say that, okay, you know, on Sunday was the biggest and the, uh, that was the longest day in their, in, the, in their lives. And then they had to rest on Monday. But the caring and sharing Is came, that what took you into yes. nursing? Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. how long were you in, in the, a career, your nursing? Uh, I started in 19... That's when I remember yes. knowing who you were. Oh, yeah. I went, I left Levuka Public School in 1955 and I started in um, Christchurch Public 1956 and I stayed there till 1959. I graduated as a staff nurse then and then there we had to do, we had to go away, you know, um, do some practical work and come back and in, um, so I came, I had the pleasure of coming down to, to nurse in, in, um, in the, in the free maternity annex here, oh my God. Right. <laughs> but right. anyway, caring was, was, for me, something that touched my heart. It made me passionate, made me feel who I was. Yes. And it just grew. Just How grew. long were you in, uh, working in the nursing and, industry? Uh, I started in 56, I, and then I, I uh, was there in uh, 1956. I came to Fiji in 1961, I got married then. Um, and then went back to Australia, was nursing there. And then we came back in um, 1979. At that time, I had moved. They didn't want to accept nurses here at that time because of the unions were so strong. They right. didn't want people coming trained outside Fiji to come in and take over the positions of senior nurses. Oh, and I was told, if you want to start here, you've got to start from the bottom. And I thought, uh-uh. Oh. No, thanks. <laughs> I'll go do something else instead, thank you very much. And which I did. Yes, yes. And we did in Well, let's red. talk about that when we, when we come back. Mm. We're talking with Mary Samasoni about her career in nursing. And we'll be back in a short while to talk about the hot bread kitchen. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and with me this evening, I have Mary Samasoni, the owner and founder of Hot Bread Kitchen. That was in 1979 when you couldn't, when you had to go back and start, uh, you know, at the bottom of nursing and you decided you weren't going to do it. And then you started working mm -hmm. um, on this concept yes. of Hot Bread Kitchen and that was in 1981. Yes. Yeah. What happened? How did that occur? Well, when, they, when the nursing um, fraternity here in Fiji didn't want me, I understood that. Right. Because, you know, there was people, local people um, that were brought up here and, and spent a lot of time. They had the unions yes. uh, promoting their interests. So I understood that and I thought, well, if they don't want me, you know, what can I do? Mm. So I applied for a job at, at the... Um, 
Peace Corps, American Peace yes. Corps, and I got the position of health director. I love that. I really love that. We went out to the villages. We worked with, with, with the American Peace Corps people and, and the village people, education, health, and roads, and whatever. It, to me, it was one of the most wonderful experiences because you know, we really worked with the people and their mm. needs. And um, I think that also working with, with, with the uh, P American Peace Corps, you know, at that time, you know, the, the ugly American was, was, uh, was the, the big thing that to, they had to change their image, their, their uh, global image to, to, to um, an American that was more uh, in tune with, 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 with the people. And um, that was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I liked that very much. Anyway, it was only for a year. And at that, after that, they closed down the American Peace Corps. Um, they felt that they had achieved their purpose. And, um, and then I, at, before then, you know, we were working on the Hot Bay Kitchen concept. We saw that in my family and the late, my late husband, um, Dr. Samisoni, yes. we saw that in Brisbane. And um, I immediately thought, oh, this will, this will do well. Because um, I'm the entrepreneur, not him. He's the mm. medical <laughs> practitioner. Um, I saw that and I went to see the, the uh, baker, David Bedgood. I said, David, would you like to come to Fiji with us and set up the hot bread kitchen? The reason I asked him was that we didn't know anything about bread or business. Mm. We, were, we were health people and we were, we were able to manage health and manage um, um, illness and things like that, but not money or, right. or product mm. or markets. Although, I mean, we do have, we did have products and markets, but it was the money handling that yes. was kept us. The business side yes. of the business. Yes. So anyway, um, David said, yes, let's go. But at that time, Fiji was, had the policy of no outside. Um, it was local, local, you know, promoting the local business, local people, not, not inviting uh, investors from overseas. So um, it took um, the country about five years after five years, David said, look, Mary, I can't hang around. I've got to go back. But he had, already, he had already opened up Hot Bread? No, no, right. no, no, no. Five years yes. discussing the just, concept? Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and uh, it took government such a long time. So to he said, approve this? Yes. At that time, at that time. Anyway, uh, we persevered. You know, we registered the name. And when he said he was going, so we got in a Rituman baker, Joe Antria. He was a great baker, but a terrible businessman. <laughs> um, and then we also found, we, because we weren't, um, you know, we weren't comfortable with business, we asked Tony Philp right. and um, Tico Eastgate to come in right. with us. Um, but then it went on, then you mm, opened up yes, the shop. Yeah. And what was the response like from the oh, local people? That first shop, Joe said, look, let's just open for a few hours. This was a Saturday. Let's just open for a few was hours. Was that at, and uh, see. opposite yes. Morris Hedstrom's yes. in that the city? That was Sindra G building, opposite right. Morris Hedstrom. And um, uh, Joe said, let's just open for a few hours and just, you know, let's taste the market. Well, <laughs> we were supposed to open for... I remember long yes, queues. Yes. It was a long queue, so, so we, we had to open till about 10 o'clock that night. And seeing as the following day was uh, Sunday, we thought, oh, well, you know, just clean up and then start on Monday. And then after that, it was just one every, you know, I was setting up three. Um, I set up after the, um, the, the, um, the one at Sundra G building opposite Morris Estrums, um, I set up at three per year. Mm for the next 10 years. Uh, so I set up 30 shops. And so you're a, you're a, um, a specialist and, and you know, very interested in, in healthy eating yes. and healthy lifestyles. Uh, the general complaint from people who are trying to lose weight or try to eat better is to cut out bread from mm. their yeah, diet, daily yeah, diet. Yes. Right? Yeah. And bread obviously is considered as a carbohydrate. Yes, yeah. And I notice here that people eat mm. a lot mm. of bread. Mm. Mm. What's your comment mm. on um, cutting out bread from your diet because mm. it could lead to, you know, an influx, mm. the, the, the carbohydrate, too much mm. carbohydrates, mm. which well, increases weight yeah, yeah. and all of that? Yeah, but, you know... Because um, we don't want to cut into your, your no. profit <laughs> margins, you know, by taking bread out of the diet. <laughs> yeah. But how do you yeah. so solve that? Well, uh, you know, the thing is about choice mm. and making your product as attractive, not only to look at, but nutritionally. 
So mm. we have the high fibers, the high seeds, yes. the high, the, the low. And you do uh, have gluten free too, don't you? Well, no, no. Right. See, the thing about gluten free, people must understand that if you're promoting gluten free, it's got to be a separate shop altogether. You oh. cannot have gluten. You cannot have bread. Anything to do with with wheat flour, you can't mix it. Why? Because um, celiac disease, right. you know, it, about 1% of the population all world round, mm. all world over, they suffer from celiac disease. Right. And yes. if you have a little bit of gluten, you know, you're just going to, it's just going to kill you. Oh, right. But, it, okay. so, but there are a lot of people who are sensitive to the different proteins. Right. There's over 28,700 proteins in oh, one gosh. little grain. So, yeah, so, it, you know, so it, how do you make bread then healthy to eat okay. on a daily basis? Okay, okay. For, for us, you know, because we were um, health people, we reduced the sugar, the, ah. the salt, and the fat in it. Right. So, you know, for, rather than, you know, 3%, we brought it down to 1% each. That, right. sort of, that sort of thing. And then, of course, promoting more fiber um, and promoting... Uh, see, the thing is, too, you know, people, the lifestyle of people, there's a lot of people who want to go and buy their bread at 6 mm. o'clock in the morning with their paper. So this is something that, mm. you know, that, that is market-driven, and you mm. serve that. But at the same time, you know, you, I, I try to make sure that, you know, there's a lot of fiber ch choices. In and something you said earlier on about it's what you eat yeah. with your bread. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's your sandwiches that you put in uh, uh, with, with your carbohydrates. And as long as it's balanced, you know, have a bit of carbohydrate, a bit of protein, a bit of fat, and all the, all the um, nutritional uh, salads and, yes. and, um, and meats. Yes. If, you, if you put that in your sandwich, you know, that is then in itself like a, like, yes. a, like, like, a, what, like a pill, like a yeah. vitamin pill. Yeah. So, again, it's choices and um, it's, it's, we, because we make fresh bread every day, you know, after 24 hours, it's sold um, half price or we send it over to, um, to, 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 the, to feed the poor. Mm. You know, that they know well, it's that. become one of the most successful businesses, mm. you know, ever created yes. by a yes. local family. Mm. Mm. And of course, uh, your whole family works yes. in that. Yeah. And it's not the only thing you've done though. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we can take a little break <laughs> and come back and find out what you have been doing as well as the Hot Bread Kitchen uh, in Fiji. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and Mrs. Mary Samasoni. Mary, one of the other things that you're really famous for, which I did mention earlier on, is your interest in local politics. And that has been a major driver for you. You've set an example for many young women who have looked at politics as a career. And uh, you, know, you were originally were with the Alliance Party, mm -hmm. um, SVT, mm -hmm. SDL, mm -hmm. and, and now Sidelpo, mm -hmm. which you know, you're one of the main mm -hmm. um, uh, members of the party. Where is politics going in, in, um, in Fiji? And in terms of the Sidelpa, uh, what's your role with the Sidelpa party? Uh, my role, um, Ellen, is uh, I, I, I'm, I was a candidate uh, to promote the Sidelpa uh, vision, platform. mission, platform. And Sidelpa means social, democratic, liberal party. Right. You know, we're socially concerned about people on the left. Um, social, democratic. We want people to have a say in everything and not be afraid. And we're liberal. We want to. Mm. We want freedom. Mm. And that, that to me, needs to be accounted to the people. Right. Um, and that's why I'm interested. And when I see something that is not going that way, I like to speak up mm. because ultimately, you know, we serve our people. I've got a. Um, I well, you employed, voted in. But, yeah. You voted in by the people, yeah, and so yes. therefore you must be accountable yeah, yes. to yes. those who have voted you in. Yes, yes. Uh, Ellen, I, I employed a, um, a, uh, my personal assistant. She comes from Boa. She's a fourth generation in, in Gawea, which is a settlement, which is a... Um, in Lamy. Uh, yes, 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 and it's um, a squatter settlement. Now, I can't understand why somebody who comes from Boa um, she's married with four children, fourth generation. Her children will be fifth generation in, in Gawea, when it should be, you know, what's wrong with 
dividing the land up and allowing people to, to buy their land and their homes, what's wrong with that? There needs to be accountability to the people so that they can live their own lives and, and enjoy their lives mm. and enjoy their, their country. Mm. And this can be done. Mm. And there's no reason why it can't, cannot. Right. And this is why I'm very interested in politics, to make sure that the leaders account to the right. people. Yes. And how do you find the um, women in politics? Are there enough women in politics? Should there be more of them yeah, in politics? Yes, yes. Well, that's a good question, Ellen. For me, you know, the world uh, average should be about 21%. I think at the moment, when in 2018, we came up to 18%. Now we've gone back to 17%. Wow. So we need to promote that. I'm a great believer in making sure gender equity. And that gender equity comes under the Sustainable Development Goals, UN Sustainable Development Goals 2030, that took over from the Millennium Development yes, Goals. Yes. To, my, to make sure that you know, people are given a fair deal. Mm. So um, you know, with, 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 with that, um, I'm very concerned that, um, that the women need to be represented in there because women can, only women can, can, can uh, promote the needs mm. and, and goals of women. I know that some men can do it, but it's be, it is better, I believe, for women to do this. In Hot Bread Kitchen, when I first went into there, I made sure that the, there was gender equity all the way up the line. From There's shops. a lot of women that work yes, there. Yes, yes. Yeah, we've got over 54% 50, of women in Hot Bread Kitchen. Very good. And, uh, and I'm very proud of that, yes. Ellen, yes. because, you know, unless you do it at leadership level, it will never happen. Mm. And, the, and for me, I've always been looking at the stats of women, and, and not only women, but the different ethnic groups throughout mm. Fiji and to come into the uh, census. Uh, for women, um, you know, the, the violence against women and children really concerned me. There's 67 percent of um, women and children that are violated against. Now, that, that is a terrible, terrible it's thing. very high. Uh, yes. And also, we, Fiji stands second in the Pacific. Papua New Guinea is, is first with their gender um, uh, violence against women and children and their rates. And then we're second, and we're fifth in the world. That is shocking. Yes, that is shocking. And how, do we, how do we get more women into politics? Okay. I mean, you know, it's just recognizing, rewarding women from the, from the bottom up. Um, Does there need to be a concerted yes, effort in campaigning yes, 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 to yes, allow women yes, in yes, there? Yes. And well, why do you think they're not stepping up to the plate? Okay, well, I mean, for me, you know, I, I, we've always pushed this for, for Sadelpa. We've always pushed it for the, um, the indigenous uh, parties because, uh, you know, I mean, we come from a, a patriot society mm. and we come from also a misogynistic society. Mm. Uh, there's, um, and we need to recognize that because otherwise we wouldn't have these high statistics. Therefore, it needs to appear in the school programs. Yes. It yes. needs to, to teach those yes. which should be just basic yes. lessons in life, yes. uh, respect for yes. each other yes. regardless of gender. Yes. It must be included yes. in our educational yes. system mm. from, yeah. you know, five, yes. six, yes. from class one. Oh, I agree, Ellen. And th for me, you know, I come from a Christian family. They talk about the fruits of the spirit, the truth, the respect, the, re the joy, the, the, the grace. You know, if we concentrate on the fruits of the spirit. And when we see it not happening, we bring it back into center stage. Mm. And especially today where, you know, secularism, you mm. know, they're, trying, they're moving the spirit yes. away from education. Yes. And it's so needed, it's yes. so needed. Yes. You know, Ellen, for me as, as a nurse, when I'm in the, uh, when I was in the, um, in the, the ICU ward, in the, and uh, that is a time when you see people connect to their spirit and think, oh, you know, right. they yes. ask for this, their spiritual right. guidance. Right. And we need to understand that and to keep promoting it from school. Mm. That's right. Mm. It needs to go back to the school yes. system. And do you think that uh, in the, you know, we've just had an election mm. um, and, you know, there are more elections to come. Is there a program that Sadelpa Party has to try and promote more women into the party? Yes, we have. Um, we have Ellen, we have it right there within, but somehow, you know, despite having the, the policies and the structure in place to promote women, it just gets 
entangled with the, the politics, the right. male politics, the provincial politics, and we need to recognize that, you, Ellen. So are you saying that it is the, our male counterparts in government, in, polit in your parties, that are actually hindering the advance of women in politics? Yes, I mean, yes, I say that. But, you know, having said that, there's a lot of good men, too, right. that, um, you know, that want to promote women. They can see from their own children, from their own mothers, uh, from their own grandmothers mm. and aunts. That's changing. That's, you know, there's a lot of it changes to change. taking place. You know, the glass ceiling, yes. we all know about that. But it's going to take time, Ellen. Yes, it's taken it's long time. enough. Yes. And it has to change um, because it's obvious in countries, uh, developed countries, mm. where um, women are doing well is because you have more women yes. in their parties, in their government, yes, yes, more involved yes. in the um, planning yes. uh, process yes. of that. It's unfortunate that we've run out of time <laughs> because yeah. we've got so much more mm -hmm. to talk about with all your experience mm -hmm. and the skills that you have mm -hmm. and what you represent mm -hmm. to women in Fiji, Mary Samasoni. It's been such a pleasure having you here. Mm -hmm. And I hope to have you back again um, sometime yes. later uh, in, in this event. Mm. So thank you very much for being mm. with us. Stay well. Mm. As I said, you look so fabulous. Mm. You're very important mm. to the women in the society. Mm. And I thank you again for being with us this mm. evening. You've been watching On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and Mrs. Mary Samasoni. We'll be back again next Monday, 8 p.m., same time, same place.